Welcoming Dr. Ellie Zarabian, host of From Chaos to Connection, growing from pain toward community. Are you ready to make the most of your challenges while moving ahead with your dreams? Do you want your spiritual growth to be part of your healing while living your life with purpose? On Chaos to Connection, you will find resources to transform your difficulties into connections with others. Change is achievable. Dr. Ellie helps you make change both within and in the world. Learn to heal past traumas, become more self-assured, and take action in the world. No matter your spiritual background or cultural heritage, we will work together to transform pain and trauma to community and well-being. You can make this world a better place, starting with yourself. From Chaos to Connection starts now. Hello and welcome. I'm Dr. Elise Arabian, and this is my show, From Chaos to Connection. If you're interested in the topic of personal growth and building better relationships at home and in the world, then you're definitely in the right place. If you have been following my podcasts in the last nine episodes, we have been taking a journey towards healing and wholeness from a state of chaos to a place of greater connection and meaning as a global community. During these past sessions, I shared both about my own journey towards health and wholeness, as well as some of the individuals I have worked with over the years and their journey towards health. Given that we have only two more episodes left together in this podcast series, I thought it would be a good idea for me to recap and highlight some of the important lessons that I have discussed so far within these last nine sessions. As both a teacher of psychology and spirituality, I find that it is important to give people time and space to sit with the material so that they can digest and integrate the information and make it their own. The way I like to do that is to summarize the key points from the previous sessions. Then your homework following this episode is to take time and make the material your own. Making the lessons your own means that you take all the time you need to take the information that made sense to you while letting go of the parts that didn't. This is how we learn to integrate material from the inside out. We initially take and absorb all the information given to us from the outside, and then through an introspective process, we work through the material to absorb what makes sense while letting go of what doesn't. After you spend some time and do your introspective work, and you have any questions or comments that you would like to address to me, know that I always welcome um, your questions and will be very happy to engage with you at that level. It's important to know that there are no right or wrong answers or responses here. This material is only food for thought and put to you for us to engage with. I'm not attached to being right or wrong or having all the right answers. Given that I always see myself as a student of life, I'm usually very eager to engage with people in order to further my own learning and to expand my own awareness. We all have a lot to learn from each other because no one has all the right answers. So the best we can do is to create a safe environment for learning so that we can come together to learn, grow, and heal with each other. Well, based on that note, you may recall that in my first episode, I introduced myself and shared a little bit about my own life story, focused primarily on my, my formative life growing up in my native country of Iran. I shared about being a religious minority and going through a religious revolution, which created many problems for myself and countless other religious minorities living in Iran. I talked about how I was able to stay mentally and emotionally strong and resilient through a time of social unrest, political upheaval, a re revolution, war, and my eventual migration out of Iran and becoming a refugee in Great Britain. 
All these experiences taught me important lessons on how to deal with and live through conflict and chaos while staying mentally and emotionally strong. Given that we're currently facing some very difficult and challenging times as a global community, I mentioned that it's important for us to stay strong and afloat and the suggestions I made based on my own lived experience and knowledge are to help you to do the same in order for you to stay strong in mind and body. The three suggestions I included in the first episode was one, to connect with a power or source greater than yourself, whether it's a connection to a higher power, the natural world, or our humanity. It's important to have a belief system above and beyond one's ego or immediate sense of self in order to remain strong in spirit. Second, I discuss creating movement in daily life, either through formal exercise or daily walks around the neighborhood or the park. Moving the body on a regular basis avoids building up stagnation, both in the body and in the mind, and that helps offset issues with depression and anxiety. The third and final approach was to practice radical honesty with yourself. If you find that your tank is a little low at this time and you're feeling down or anxious, being totally honest with yourself means acknowledging and accepting what is happening for you right now. Then you go forward and share your feelings with a trusted family member, friend, or a professional in the community. In the second podcast, I discussed how all that is taking place in the world with climate issues like the floods, fires, earthquakes, and hurricanes, as well as social and political unrest, it's important to avoid incurring trauma. Developing trauma as a result of all that's going on for people is a serious concern for psychologists and on a global scale as well. That's why it's important to do what we can to stay strong and mentally and emotionally resilient. I gave three suggestions on how to avoid taking on trauma. First, learn to become a witness to the events that are happening around you, as opposed to seeing yourself as a participant or a victim in what's going on. We do that by externalizing the negative situations around us as happening out there as opposed to bad things happening to us. So we don't internalize the situations and see ourselves as victims. Second, I discuss the importance of developing a meditative practice where you learn to watch and observe your thoughts come and go rather than becoming your thoughts. For example, if you're feeling anxious, when you meditate, you allow yourself to see the anxiety pass through you rather than identify yourself as being an anxious person. I also mentioned mindfulness meditation is a great non-religious way to develop a meditative practice. However, if you're part of a religious tradition that offers meditation as a tool, then that's a great approach to building resistance against stress, depression, and anxiety. The third and final approach in avoiding trauma is to develop a daily practice of gratitude by keeping a daily journal and writing 10 different things that you're grateful for every day, you will be helping yourself remain in a more positive state of mind rather than focusing on the negative or what is not working in your life. In the third, fourth, and fifth episodes, I focused on building better relationships at home and in the world. Given that so many people are struggling with relationships, I thought that it would be important to spend more time on helping people address some of the big areas at home and out in the world when it comes to building more effective relationships. 
I started with addressing building better relationships at home because that is the most important and vital area to address in people's lives. Our home environment is the one place where we need to feel secure in order to be able to effectively handle the difficulties that we face out in the world. Also, the home environment is where children learn healthy and positive behaviors. Given that parents model the right behavior for their children, it becomes essential that adults learn good skills to manage stress and conflict at home. I talked about how to shift the negative energy that you may be experiencing at home by depositing positive energy into the relationship. I then gave a couple of examples of how some of the couples I have worked with turned their relationship around by doing that. Moving on to the fourth podcast, I discuss building better relationships at work. Given that most people spend the majority of their week at work, it makes sense that we cultivate better relationships at work too. Otherwise, working with people or in an environment that stresses people out on a daily basis can seriously affect the mental and emotional health of the person. So to build better relationships at work, I discuss the difference between intrinsic versus extrinsic motivation and why both matter when helping people to do better at work. Money, health benefits, retirement package, or stock options are only half the equation for helping people stay motivated and do a good job at work. The second and perhaps more significant part of staying motivated and doing a good job at work relates to intrinsic or inner motivation. Intrinsic motivation is about the inner reasons why people stay long-term and thrive. Inner motivation is about the softer values in life, like being seen, being heard, feeling like you matter, and that your contributions make an impact. Building positive relationships at home and in the workplace contribute to building better and more positive relationships out in the world or in the community. In the fifth podcast, I discussed how much of the problems people face with each other is due to a rather extensive deprivation of love and support in their immediate life, which gets projected out into the world and onto others. I talked about allowing more love and joy to flow into your life by removing the, the inner barriers that get in the way of love so that you can fill, fill your cup with more joy from the inside out. Let's take a short break here. And when we return, I will summarize the teachings from the last few sessions together. We'll be right back. Welcome back. I'm Dr. Ellie. And in this week's podcast, I'm giving a summary of the previous sessions in order to help you integrate and digest the material a little more. The point of these podcasts is to help you build more internal reserves or buffers in order to increase your chances of dealing with life difficulties and stressors with greater ease and success. Now, to be able to do a better job in our individual lives as well as in relation with each other, we have to learn how to manage and work with pain. That includes facing and dealing with our own pain as well as learning how to effectively deal with and manage the pain and suffering of others. So in my sixth episode, I address the concept of pain as an important teacher that we can learn from. In my work as a healer and a counselor, I work with people and their pain from many different angles. And what I have come to, fi to find out is that most people don't even realize how much pain they're actually carrying around. When people are not aware of how much pain and suffering they're carrying, they certainly wouldn't know how to deal with other people who are carrying around their own pain. Pain, when dismissed or unmanaged, can cause a great deal of harm in people's life. 
I gave an example of a client I worked with who lost his beloved wife of 25 years due to cancer. My client was utterly devastated and did not have any inclination or motivation to continue with his own life. But through our work together, he was eventually able to connect with his own pain and suffering and gradually come out of the work um, uh, through come, come through his own depression uh, and uh, suffering that he was experiencing. Over a period of some time, he was able to gain inner uh, strength, which eventually led him to embark upon the second chapter of his life. When we self-reflect and learn to work through our own pain, we free up a lot of our mental and emotional energy, and that enables us to move along in life with greater ease, energy, motivation, and enthusiasm. In the seventh podcast, I discuss that creating a lasting and sustainable change is first an inside job. As I'm sure you see for yourself, both in your own life and with those around you, most people are used to tackling issues from the outside in. That is, they rush to go outside of themselves in order to change what is not working in their life whether it's trying to fix relationships, career difficulties, or problems with family members or in the community, people's tendency is to try and change the other people or the situation outside of them. That's going outside of oneself to make change happen. But that approach is actually counterproductive and can lead to more problems and chaos rather than good. What I suggested here is to actually slow down, learn to sit still and self-reflect and take inventory of what is happening inside of you. By learning to work with and shift problems from the inside out, we allow for change to come about more naturally and organically. Here, I gave an example of a client of mine who struggled with insurmountable difficulties in her life. She had goals that she wanted to achieve, but had lots of expectations put on her by her family, and that created a great deal of conflict between her and her family. As a result, she felt stuck in her life and did not see a way out of her current situation or the difficulties with her family. That's because up until then, she had tried to resolve the difficulties from the outside by attempting to change her family. But through our work, she learned to let go of that approach and instead focused her attention on managing her own stress and inner conflict. The more she was able to get out of her own way and create order inside of herself, the more empowered she felt about what she needed to do in her life. The gradual shift in her changed the power dynamics between herself and her family members which then shifted the way she approached her difficulties. Eventually, she was able to pursue her dreams in a more productive and positive way. By learning to shift the way we approach problems in our life, we create new and more effective ways to handle and manage conflict. In the eighth podcast, I discussed finding a more meaningful and sustainable approach to finding love and peace in our own life and in the world by developing a deeper connection to our source. I talked about how given all the problems we're facing in the world, many people are starting to question their life, their reality, and their faith. When people come to such a halt in their life, We call it an existential crisis. I personally work with many people who are undergoing such a state. In this episode, I shared an example of an individual I worked with who literally woke up one morning and didn't recognize himself anymore. He questioned everything about his life and whether his life offered him any meaning or purpose. Such a state can be quite alarming and overwhelming for an individual if they don't know what's happening for them. 
but if the state is managed with great deal of care and consideration, it can lead to a spiritual awakening where the individual has a chance to redo their life and relationships from a totally new and more fulfilling place. So as a way to renew, heal, and grow as individuals and as a community, it's really important that we learn to take good care of our own mental and emotional health, especially during such tough times. Leading to our ninth episode, I talked about a return to our source as a way to cultivate a deeper connection to ourselves and to each other using the teachings of one of my own teachers and global unifiers, Molana Jaloluddin Rumi. In this episode, I shared a little bit about my own background and how I came across the work of this great Sufi poet, Mystic, and how I use his teachings as a framework for what I do as a healer and a counselor. Here, I talked about how I have incorporated such wisdom in my practice to help people find a path to themselves while achieving the goals they want to attain in life, but starting from the inside out. I gave an example of a young woman I worked with who came to see me because she wanted to find the right partner, but the prospect of doing that was a daunting task for her. She was continuously going outside of herself, hoping to find the right match, while struggling with feelings of helplessness and deep resentment towards her situation. When COVID hit and we were placed on lockdown, she was forced to remain at home and she took that opportunity to connect with herself and to self-reflect on her life and her current situation. Her newfound connection to herself expanded her awareness about her life and the insights that she got into herself gradually changed her approach towards the way she was pursuing men. This subtle but significant shift in her approach deepened a friendship with a friend of hers who eventually became her life partner. So you can hopefully see that what I have laid out here in these podcasts is to show how the world impacts the individual and how the individual impacts the world they live in. Using an approach that begins from the inside out and one that is rooted in spirituality and psychology, my clients were able to heal, grow, and change in order to resolve the conflicts and difficulties that they were facing in life. Their growth eventually empowered them to pursue goals that they did not think were initially even possible. Whether it's tackling personal relationships at home, in the workplace, or out in the community, our connections or the lack thereof are reflected in the quality of life we live in. Those who have a better understanding of themselves and why they behave the way they do end up making better choices in life. They're also able to improve relationships as well as create a life that is more purposeful and meaningful. Developing a more meaningful and sustainable connection to our spiritual source enables us to bypass trauma, while professional counseling can help teach us better life skills so that we can create a more positive, loving, and peaceful uh, life inside and outside the home. So please take time to self-reflect on these teachings for yourself and take what you will from them so that you too may live a healthier and more balanced life. This concludes our 10th episode. Next month will be six months since I started offering these podcasts. Given that we only have um, two more sessions left, I want to ask if you um, have enjoyed these podcasts and if you think you have benefited from them, please consider what you would like to see in the future if you want to see more programs like these. Um, for example, if you want to see more interaction with, with us, talking, chatting, or comments, or for me to do interviews, uh, so that I can have a better understanding for the kind of programs that you want to see. In the meantime, thank you for joining me today. I'm Dr. Elise Arabian. This is the Transformation Network from Chaos to Connection. I look forward to seeing you in two weeks. Take good care and see you soon.
You have been listening to Dr. Ellie Zarabian, host of From Chaos to Connection. Tune in every second and fourth Monday at 2 p.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com for more resources and tools to help with healing on your journey of life. You can impact the globe in the most powerful way possible. Whatever your spiritual background and cultural heritage is, you can transform pain and trauma into building community and connection. Join Dr. Ellie in identifying what you need to heal within and in our world. For more information, visit CenterOnPeace.com. That's CenterOnPeace.com.